the building was derelict. It was on, it was on its last legs. It was like taking something that was a bit broken and making it work again. And there was always something nice about doing that. And I suppose in many ways, the whole idea of the village is that it was something that, that is a bit broken. You know, it's been kind of shattered by tourism um, and the pressures of that brings to bear on communities in this area, there's an enormous um, amount of empty housing because 60% of the houses in the village are holiday homes. So they're pretty much empty through the winter. We just went to a lot of meetings and didn't really say very much and just listened. And then we gently started suggesting that maybe we should fix the leak in the roof. We started up a weekend volunteer group and we just cooked big lunches, made it fun and just slowly started repairing, painting roofs and walls and lots of decorating and so on. One day there was a, an envelope with 500 pounds and it pushed through the door and a, a, a little note from an old lady saying she's too old to help but wanted to see the building back on its feet. So the buildings, particularly the Institute, has gone from being derelict to being really quite a thriving, active centre that's being fully used, it's generating income, it operates without funding, so it doesn't, it doesn't get funding from any source. Uh, it generates all its own income, it has six members of staff, turns over about just under 200,000 a year. Um, most importantly, it's, it's busy, it's full of people. Uh, and lots of them in very diverse ways. There's a nurse's office, there's, there's, there's health aspects, there's well, obviously a wide range of, sort of cultural and arts and meetings and cooking and libraries and you know, it's all, it's all active. That whole beautiful hillside was a massive mine and this valley we're in was industrial. This whole, the whole side of this valley was charcoal burning, so the, this was a valley full of smoke and industry. So the Mechanics Institutes were originally funded by industrialists and very quickly became a huge movement across uh, Britain. I think there were 1,200 Mechanics Institutes in both major cities where they were huge institutions and also in tiny villages where there were just one room, usually a reading room. And Coniston had a reading room. And when Ruskin moved to Coniston, he was made president of the Mechanics Institute. It was a membership organization. Most of the village was involved in one school or another. It was lace making and wood carving, the principal ones from the Institute. Uh, they also started the Repoussé Copper. They all lasted up until the Second World War. And after the Second World War, the Institute became a recreation facility, really. It became famous for beat parties, village dances, anyway, you know, rock and roll. <laughs> All the projects, this road project has evolved very, very slowly and has been drawn out of fortuitous coincidence in many cases. So um, Takashi Hertz, who brought a group of students here uh, to look at arts and crafts, and we took a role in kind of showing them around the Lake District and taking them to various arts and crafts buildings and talking about Ruskin. Takeshi's very interested in Ruskinian values. He's interested in the students learning to actually build. And we set us a number of different projects for um, the students to look at. Small scale kiosks and bus shelters and things like that. And so I think about nine projects. So it's a huge investment really for an arts organisation to make, to commit itself to a a very small population, 600 people, and to, to move so slowly and so gently forward. 
I think we've achieved quite a lot, but it's been such a slow process that I think people forget where, where it's come from. It's nearly 10 years of very gentle, very gentle progress. The slowness is, is really important. The sense that you, you're here for the, the long haul, and some of the things we've done at Lawson Park have been to do with that, for example, planting an orchard. You don't plant an orchard if you're thinking of moving off in the near future.